you know, and when I tore my ACL in 2014, I had so many of my friends say, oh, you're going to come back stronger. You're, and that was, you know, one of my first injuries coming into the sport. And of course, you're young. You don't know. It's one of your first injuries. So, you know, you're you're just worried and you're thinking like, this is it. You know, I'm not going to be able to, I'm, I won't have my strength back. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm, this is it. From Peloton Magazine, this is Aerogram Talks, presented by Penarello. American superstar Chloe Digert is the current time trial world champion and world record holder in the individual pursuit. The 23-year-old rider is relatively new to cycling, and her talent is immense. Laura Winter of Vox Women in the UK, a new content partner of Peloton Magazine, chatted with Chloe at her home in Boise, Idaho. I'm so excited to be joined by Chloe Diger. Chloe, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you? Yeah, not bad. Adapting to this new normal that we've got. Uh, so whereabouts are you at the moment? How are you coping in lockdown? Yeah, I'm in uh, Boise, Idaho. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm living on my own. Um, so it's it's been really nice to just kind of chill and relax. And uh, so, yeah, it's been it's been good here. It's not too uh, not too bad. Still been able to train, get out and do some stuff if you wanted. But I'm kind of on a break right now, so not doing too much. But it's been it's been good. Okay, what's your training schedule? You're having a break, I guess, because there's no racing. Um, and all of those races that we're used to seeing you build up into on the road now: Colorado Classic, Joe Martin Stage Race, obviously Amgen Tour of California, not happening. Uh, so, what does day to day look like for you at the moment? Yeah, right now I'm just really focusing on strength training and, and maintaining um, a lot, you know, because I'm very, very injury prone. So just doing everything I can to make sure that um, I'm staying strong and, you know, not folding and, and not, um, you know, giving up on doing everything I need to do to make sure that, you know, I keep healthy. So yeah. I'm riding every once in a while, every other day or so, I'll get on the trainer and ride Zwift. Really easy. Um, but yeah, I should start training here in the next few days. Oh, okay. So you've had kind of, I guess, how many months off now or how, much, how many months? About a break? month. About a month. Yep. Okay. Have yeah. you enjoyed that? Has it been a little bit of a transition? Because it's so difficult when you are an athlete and your whole life is training and racing and to suddenly stop. Yeah. yeah. You know, my coach is Kristen Armstrong and she, uh, she jokes around a lot. She'll, she, you know, she says it to me, but whenever she asks or when people ask her like, Oh, what's Chloe do? And what she do during a break? Does it drive her crazy? And yeah. she, you know, always says that like, I'm so good at shutting it off. Like if, if she like gives me an off day, like I will literally do nothing. I don't need to walk. I don't need to do strength work. Like I don't do absolutely anything. So it really doesn't bother me. You know, if I don't have to ride bikes, I don't want to ride bikes. Like not at all. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's been nice. This break's been just really refreshing and Um, you know, but when it's go time again, I'll be able to get back on my bike and, um, you know, be able to enjoy it again. So you can really compartmentalize them between off the bike and on. It's like, there's no lukewarm with you. You're hot or you're cold. Right. hundred percent. Oh, I love that. Um, okay. Yeah. So you are on Zwift and of course you're on the Watt bike as well. Um, yeah. What kind of stuff are you doing on the Watt bike then when you are in full training and when you are gearing up and doing intervals and workouts, what exactly is the other workouts that you're doing? Yeah. You know, it's actually, it's really nice. You know, back before Rio was my first time on the Watt bike and, and doing the specific training. It's, it, that's what I loved when you, you know, when you got on the Watt bike, you knew you were going to be doing something hard. You knew you were going to yeah. be doing something worthy. And, you know, some of my, you know, I, I remember every workout that I've ever done, you know, on a walk bike, it's, um, doing team pursuit effort type stuff, you know, simulation things, um, you know, being on for 20 seconds or 40 seconds. And then, and then, you know, still being on, but pretending that you're in the draft and then and backing it off, but keeping the same cadence. And there's so many, so many different things, sprinting efforts that I actually will throw up. in. I, I have my first time doing them. I threw up in that one. I, I've seen awful. the pictures on Instagram of you yeah. crouched <laughs> yeah. over like a waste bin. Oh, yeah. it's awful. The what bike yeah. can touch you though, in the best way, yes. right? Yeah. And that's what I love, you know, cause you know, being on the track, you know, I've, uh, I mean, I've definitely dry heaved before. Um, never thrown up. I don't think being on the track, uh, but the Watt bike, I don't know what it is about it. It's just like, you can just give that extra 1% or something. 
Um, let's look back then over your career, um, kind of going back to the start. Um, were you very active and sporty as a kid? Was was an active lifestyle and sport just part of who you were? Yeah. You know, growing up, I mean, my dad had a little BMX track built in our yard. Uh, then it turned into a mile long um mountain bike track so I mean cycling was always there it was just like I had no interest I didn't care I didn't even whatever you know but I, I had always ridden a bike like I couldn't even tell you the first time I rode without training wheels it was just a way of life in our family sure um but yeah no I I was a soccer player um I ran track and cross country I played basketball I wanted to play football my dad wouldn't let me um, but yeah, very active, um, but just very injury prone, you know, like I, I in, in sixth grade was when I had my first injury as a runner. Cycling was not on the program at all. I just kept getting injured. I had surgeries and it was just kind of my dad's way of getting me to stay active. And um, yeah, actually the first race I did was a bribe, like to be able to go and do it, I was bribed by using my brother's zip wheels. And if I won, I got a pair of Oakleys. So, of course, I had to do it. So that was the start of the career in 2013, I think. Well, let's just talk. I mean, I had a question a bit further down, but you're bringing up injuries so much. And I think that's actually something that's really useful for those listening is how you maintain such a positive mentality towards your sports when you have been injured so much, how do you overcome those injuries and how do you stay positive and stay focused when it feels like life's just throwing one thing after another at you? Yeah. And I think that definitely really ties in well with the situation we're in now. You know, I've had setbacks my entire life. Yeah. Um, you know, so right now with the Olympics being postponed, I know so many athletes that probably never had a setback in their life or just they have no idea how to handle, how to cope with this situation. And for me, it's just like, ah, OK, whatever. Next year. Great. Perfect. Um, you know, it's just it's something that you I mean, I've literally been dealing with it my whole life, so I don't really think much of it now. But really realizing and thinking about the other athletes that don't know how to cope with it. Um, you know, a setback could be, I mean, absolutely anything, but, um, you know, I, I think definitely the scariest one was my concussion. Um, I actually, yeah. I had a, I had a knee surgery later on that year. It was, it was private, it was never really talked about. Um, so coming back from that was, you know, cause I've, I've had setbacks before and I've always been able to come back and I, I wasn't ever really too worried, but having that specific one, I didn't have my strength back. I, it took, you know, basically all season to get back to where I thought I should be, you know? Um, and that was, you know, a couple months before world championships last year. Um, so yeah, it's just, you know, and when I tore my ACL in 2014, I had so many of my friends say, Oh, you're going to come back stronger here. And that was, you know, one of my first injuries coming into the sport. And of course you're young, you don't know it's one of your first injuries. So you know, you're, you're just worried and you're thinking like, this is it, you know, I'm not going to be able to, I'm, I won't have my strength back. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm, this is it. And mm. I had so many people, you know, you're going to come back even stronger. You're going to be so strong. Don't worry about it. Like you'll be back. And I mean, that's really how you got to look at it. But I mean, again, it, it doesn't, it doesn't just happen. You have to work at it. You have to continue therapy. You have to continue anything and everything you need to do to make sure that it, it gets back. You know, I mean, like I said, the, with the concussion and the knee surgery, the concussion happened, a, you know, over a year and a half before I got my strength back But the knee surgery happened, you know, just under a year before. And I had to, I had to work, you know, how hard it was to lose those races to, to, you know, not be where I thought I should be. The, the struggles that I had mentally wanting to quit, like, you know, you had to, you had to keep going. And I mean, that's definitely the hardest part. Um, but you just have to believe and trust and, and know that you'll get back eventually. Yeah. It sounds like you've had such a special, unique relationship that's, that's culminated in that success. Um, talk me through your memories of that day in Yorkshire, the time trial, because coming in, everyone was looking at Annemiek van Vloten, Anna van der Breggen, um, and I think it was Anthony McCrossan, the commentator, said, watch Chloe Digerts. Like He'd obviously seen you at the Worlds that year, where you broke your own world record in a day, you lowered the individual pursuit world record to 316. 
sensational stuff. He'd seen all of that and obviously thought, hang on, if she can do that on the track, yes, okay, over three and a bit minutes, but what can she do on the road? You've been winning all summer on the yeah. road. Yeah. Um, yeah, what are your memories of that day? But yeah, you know, for the time trial, I go into every race thinking I'm going to win. I think, I mean, obviously I don't want that to sound cocky, but like I don't show up to a race to just podium. I don't, I don't work the way I work to just show up to get third place. That's just, I, what's the point of even going? Yeah. Um, you know, and in two years prior, I, you know, I, I did the Norway world championships on six weeks of training and, um, you know, I thought I was going to win. I, I really did, you know, and I got fourth place. Um, but I was not fit. I, I was not healthy. I was, you know, I, cause I had the injury, I had the hip injury. Yeah. Um, so having that prior, you know, knowing, oh, I got fourth place and I wasn't fit, you know, having that in the back of my head, knowing like, okay, I'm fit now. I, I, I've never raced these girls when I've been fit. I, I've, I've, I've never had the opportunity. I know what they can do. I went into it thinking that I could win. I, I did. I, I had this confidence thinking, oh, I, I, I could win. Um, you know, but the, the race had gotten postponed to just the, you know, 30 minutes or yeah. something. And, um, again, it's a setback. It, it, I, I didn't think anything of it. You know, everybody has to do it. It's not just me, you know, the rain, everybody's going to be in it. It's not just me. You know, I'm not, I'm not worried about it. I, I, I wasn't stressed. Um, you know, I, I just remember, I remember getting on the bike. I was definitely, I was nervous. I, I was nervous. Um, I got on the bike, you know, I started and, um, you know, I, I remember thinking I knew the course, like the back of my hand. I did. I, you know, I, I read it, written it only a few times, but I knew, I knew it, you know, I knew where mm. I needed to cross. I knew how many times I needed to cross the center line. Like I, wow. rem- I just, I know every bit I still do, you know? And wow that's that's fascinating that you can yeah. get it into your head like that so yeah. quickly yeah that's amazing yeah um but I remember every kilometer thinking oh on me and Reagan they're they're going one to two seconds faster than me right now I need I need to just push just wow. a little bit more you know and I just I felt like I was just constantly on my edge because I knew I needed to make up if I was going to make up time it needed to be at the first section because you know I'm climbing is not my thing so the second half I knew was going to be de- uh, tough. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, and it was, it was kind of funny. I remember, you know, Ina Teutenberg was in my follow car. She was in, she was on this radio. And I remember at the beginning it was like, all right, settle in. Like you're doing good. Good job. Yeah. Whatever. And <laughs> I remember catching Lisa and just everything yeah. changed. The, the whole car was like, ah, yeah, yeah, go on, go on, go. You know, just the whole time, like the end half of the race screaming and yelling and cussing and it was just, uh, it was just one of the funniest things um but yeah I, I just I didn't know how much I was up I, I remember um because Anamik and uh, Vanderbreg and they didn't come through the time split until I was you know about maybe seven k's out and yeah. um you know at, at this point you know Ina has her her accent and she's she's yelling and the radio is <laughs> kind of muffled so like the the first time she told me a time check I thought she said I was down and so I'm like oh full gas keep going keep going and then I remember getting to about 3k to go and she's like you're up chill don't take any risks like yeah just chill chill." and um you know again but it, it was um you know coming across the line and seeing how much I how much time I had and I knew that you know they were still they still had to come and I knew yeah yeah I had a minute but um or uh what is it? A minute on them at the um, checkpoint. I knew they were going to gain time, or I thought they were on those climbs. And <laughs> so, yeah, I, it was um, at this point. You know, looking back at it, you know, I've had so many people. Oh, so you would have been eleventh at the men's. And sure. how I work is like, well, crap. Why couldn't I have been top ten? So yes, you know, I, I won the race, <laughs> and that's great. But like, what's next now? Like, why couldn't yeah. I have been better? You know, what could I have done to have been better? You know, so that's just I'm always trying to find ways, like what I could have done to do better. What could I have done to be faster? You know, I think that's Never the DNA by. of a champion. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> why you know athletes like you are, are champions. That's that's your makeup, isn't it? To constantly think, well, okay, that's this is great history made what's next 
Final final question from me. You mentioned that the time you did to break that world record in February, you still weren't happy with it. Um, 3.16.9.3.7 was the time you went in the final. Um, what's the dream then? What's the goal? Like, what's what's the ultimate? The I don't, all-time goal is You won't is give me a time, will you? No, break. actually, I want to break 3.10. So under 3.10, but I, will, I won't go to altitude to do it. <laughs> 3.10, wow. Wow. Oh my gosh, that's insane. Big dreams. Oh my goodness, Chloe, it's been absolutely brilliant to chat to you. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. So inspiring. Uh, Take care of yourself in lockdown and I hope to see you smashing it out there on the roads and the track soon. We hope you liked this interview. Make sure to check out voxwomen.com and our award-winning magazine at pelotonmagazine.com.